streaming, so I knew the internet would be better here. <laughs> we're live. We're live now. So, hey, uh, for those of you that might be watching this live or recorded, this is Diane Hockman. I'm joined today by the beautiful Angela Brooks. And we are going to be completely ignoring you. We're going to be working together. We're just letting people eavesdrop a little bit. Um, so after the live stream or later on, if you have any questions or comments, I'll definitely go back and take a look. Um, and of course, if any of you guys are interested in doing um, uh, some one-on-one -on -one work like this, uh, just reach out to me, diane at dianehockman.com. So now, Miss Angela, let's make believe there's nobody here because we can't see him anyway. So. Yeah, no way. <laughs> well, it's just, like I said, it's just good content. It's like a win-win. Um, and you've been in the industry for quite a while. So I think with you in particular, this is going to be a really good um, uh, kind of banter back and forth a little bit maybe more of a mastermind than, than anything. So do you want to tell me about what you want to work on today? I want to worry, work on my story because um, anytime you speak on stage, anytime you're building a product, a program or anything where you're introducing yourself, mm -hmm. I want a little bit more than the 30 second elevator type speech, but I want to get my story to where I don't tell, I don't talk about myself well. And I think a lot of people don't do that. I don't give myself credit for what I do and what I know. So I wanted an outsider to hear my story and so that it can be written and told well. Okay. Um, well, here's the good news before we jump into it. Our stories are never about ourselves anyway. So in a lot of ways, even though we're talking about ourselves, we're not talking about ourselves because the whole point of a story is to inspire the audience. Yes hear from you, listen, learn from you, and, and gravitate towards you. So it's about them, even though we're talking about ourselves, um, which helped me because I know um, I'm not one to sit and to my own heart too. You know, and I, both of us, we have some pretty good standards. We have some pretty good, um, but we're not exactly the people that run around and go look at me. We're also, I'm getting better with pictures, but we're not the people that are, you know, up all the cute pictures and all this other stuff. Um, so I'm getting better because my kids have told me, my children teach me. They said, if you don't do pics, you're in trouble. So yep. so I'm doing more pictures. Reluctantly, I take a hundred to get one. <laughs> it's what it takes. We do it. <laughs> I, know. I know. So tell me your story, girl, and then we'll um, work on it. Okay. When I got started in network marketing, I was still working a full-time job. I was working three days a week going in at six at night, getting off at seven in the morning. I was a mom. Um, I had two young boys. A nurse. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay. Working in a psychiatric hospital. So extremely stressful, extremely dangerous. And I was trying, of course, our raises in the hospital, we didn't, before I retired, it had been eight years before I had gotten a raise. Yeah. Long time. But I had been in long enough that I couldn't leave because of the benefits, the insurance, the, you know, the good, the things that everybody strives for. I had the max of that. Um, I had two young boys. So when I would get off of my work, sometimes I slept, sometimes I didn't. Usually lived on about two to four hours of sleep. And we would go to the soccer field. We'd go to the baseball field, wherever it is that we had practice. Mm -hmm. And then I started building a business through my phone because it was with me all the time. Actually, it was a Blackberry. <laughs> right? It's funny. I was looking through my memories on Facebook the other day and I was talking about my Blackberry and I just started laughing. <laughs> and I wrote my emails. I wrote my blog post on that Blackberry. And then I would email them to myself so that I could fix it when I got home. And that would be late at night. But that's, that was the only way I knew to, to make it happen and to be able to work myself out of a job. Mm -hmm. So it took me three years and 10 months before I was able to, once I started my network marketing company, um, which was not my first one, but that's the one that took me out of a job. Okay. So, How long were you in the company that you hit it in? Three years. I started in 2010, retired in uh, 2014. Okay, so you had dabbled in it earlier. Oh, yeah. Lots of dabbling. Three years and 10 months from the time that you got started in this particular company and found your yep. home. Okay. Yep. 
Oh, I did lots. I probably did 10 years worth of dabbling because I didn't have a clue. I didn't even know where to get started. And everybody told me it was not possible to build a business online. <laughs> and I was like, okay, but I don't have any other choice. I didn't have any more sleep and I didn't have energy to do the party thing. I just wasn't in me. I was told that you couldn't do it without meetings, but my upline was three hours away. I couldn't travel Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, three hours each way. That's right. Saturday, as much as I could, I got up at three o'clock in the morning to be there. Um, but not Tuesday, Thursday. How could I do that? I had kids. Right. So, powerful. Yep. Yeah. My upline was in, she lived in New York at the time. So we had met in Chicago at an event. Um, where I had actually, it was my first uh, business coach. And um, I was starting to learn how this thing worked. And she just told me, she said, and, and literally, not, a, not that she was a bad person, but she had nothing to do with me because number one, she didn't know how to teach or coach me. Mm -hmm. She was like, this company won't work online. And I'm like, okay, but this is all I got. <laughs> and it's done pretty darn good. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Okay. A couple of questions from what you've told me so far. Um, was your family, did your family, were you carrying the benefits and because so if you left your job, did that mean your family didn't have medical and stuff or did it have some? My husband's company, um, my husband's job carries the family benefits. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to worry about that. Okay. And okay. when I uh, left, of course, my benefits went with me. So I didn't lose anything when I retired. Mm -hmm. So I've been there so twice. How many years did you work that you were able to retire? 25 and a half. Okay. I'm looking for um, points that are concerns for people. That's why I'm asking. Absolutely. When I look at a story, I'm always looking at what is the audience thinking? Um, so why do we have nurse? Medical professionals in general um, are overworked, underpaid, even though it seems like they're making good money for what they're doing. They're not. Um, they're exhausted and they do depend on those benefits. Um, yep. mom, so we have nurse, right? Medical professional. We have mom. No sleep. Yep. Um, and most nurses are working overtime, like two or three shifts a week overtime mm -hmm. or a second job. And I was like, I either had to give up my family and work more or I had to figure out how to get out from under it because I didn't want to work more. It was already stressful. So now let me ask you a question because the story that you just told me is pretty gosh darn good. So I don't know that it's the story that's an issue for you. It might be doing it in front of people that might be the challenge because you just told it to me perfectly well. I'm like, every time I hear your story, I'm like, damn, that girl. Wrong. She, you know, she did it. Right. So is it story's good. Do you want to just make it more dramatic? Or is it that when you go to say it to strangers or in front of an audience, it feels awkward? Or what part of it is talent? I think it's to the point where it um not bragging, that's not the right word. Um, I guess it's humble because it's like you're supposed to work, you're supposed to have a job, you're you know. I don't know. Telling my story just feels weird, to be honest. I don't know why it feels weird. It just does. So let's start through that. Um, do you think that that's what the audience is thinking, or is that people in your life, perhaps, that you're so different than friends and family so that they don't? Different. I'm sorry. I am so different from everybody in my family. Totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I tell the story and I tell it like I do to you in front of an audience, mm -hmm. people are sitting with their mouth hanging open. Literally. Yeah, I'm saying the story is so darn good. Yeah. I think we have to work on your issue with telling it versus the story. I mean, you just told me the story. Great. I mean, you just told me I didn't sleep. I had to go to the ball field on no rest. Um, you know, I, I would embellish maybe with the psychiatric hospital. I'm sure you saw a lot of things and not that you should reveal anything appropriate, but yeah. Going in every night, not knowing, you know, what was going to be going on or who was coming in on any given night. What uh, you know, that's scary stuff. Um, so let's talk about why it feels weird. Um, where are you most often telling your story? Like, um, if I speak, if somebody asks me to go speak, of course, you always want to tell a little bit 
about you, where you came from, how you got to the stage to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, that the thing that I'm telling now is writing it out on this for this web page. Okay, you need it in writing. Is yeah, challenge. I'm writing it for this self page to go for the academy that I'm building. Okay, is like I don't know. I don't think I'd give enough details. I think the biggest thing is like my story is like this long and it's longer than that. Okay, tell me, tell me about the academy. What are you building? The I have people ask me all the time, "How did you do this?" So I have every time somebody would ask me and I would do a training, I have recorded it, of course, and I've put it in this academy, how I use Facebook, how I use LinkedIn, how I use my blog. Um, I talk about the podcast. So any I've got like seven or seven modules and there's quite a bit. I don't remember how many bonuses I put in there. There's lots of bonuses in there. So it could carry somebody three months if they was to go through every piece of content in there. Okay. This is what we're going to do. Uh, let me close this for a minute. We're going to open up a notepad. We're going to start writing. Cool. Uh, okay. What's the name of your academy? It is Network Marketing Freedom Foundation. Network Marketing Freedom Foundation. Academy, yeah. Network Marketing Freedom Foundation Academy? Yeah. That's a long name. It is long. And is that's, a, I was going to say, that's not written. You know, that I was going to say, is it a done deal? Yeah, that's not a done deal yet. Okay, I would, foundation and academy are the conflict. Um, so I like Network Marketing Freedom Foundation. I like Network Marketing Freedom Academy. Um, I don't like the, the whole thing. The whole thing. It's too long. It's too long. Yeah. It's too long. People are not going to be able to say it easily. It doesn't abbreviate easily. Um, with Ray's, it's tech, you know, T-E-C. Um, right. It's easy. It's, it's, it's clear what it is. Um, I think the foundation is the confusing word in there because okay. that means charitable which might create a cognitive conflict by the way i can't see you right now because i have the screen up okay so you know um see we have to think about words when we use words we have to use them very specifically because sometimes a word has multiple meanings and sometimes it has some conscious meanings like for example the company i work with they have a product that's 29 dollars, and it's a seven day trial of the product but they call it a sample Right. Sample to many people means free. Right. Creates a, a cognitive dissonance or a conflict in their mind. Um, so we have to be very careful about words. Foundation often means charitable, um, et cetera. In some people's mind means you're 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 giving me something. And yes, you're giving them something, but I'm assuming you want to charge for this. Absolutely. So so that would be the word I'd consider changing or eliminating. Okay. And then your abbreviation looks nicer. What'd you say, Angela? I said, and then the abbreviation looks nicer. Yeah. I wish it spelled out something, but it doesn't. It's N M F A. <laughs> N M F A is all right, though. Um, reminds me of like a degree or something, you know, bachelor BFA. Um, it's fine. Um, you might also change out network marketing. Maybe it just needs to be marketing foundation academy. No, foundation and academy. I mean, freedom, not foundation. Marketing freedom, marketing freedom academy is good um, because as soon as you add network marketing, unfortunately, it, it creates conflict in people's minds as well. Um, so you might want to just use marketing. I'm not saying we should stray from our roots or who we are, but shorter, more succinct. Um, and then when some, somebody says, uh, when, it, when a name of something says what it is, when somebody immediately knows what they're getting, uh, you know, the promise is in the headline or the promise is in the name. So, um,
All the flow is a lot better. <laughs> I'm sorry? I said the Marketing Freedom Academy, that flows much better. It also is the same initials as a Master's of Fine Arts, and I know that sounds weird, um, but, mm -hmm. but it sounds like a degree is what I'm saying, which is kind of cool. Um, okay. I'm just going to mess around and let some words flow. Um, nothing I'm writing has to be what we're using. Um, I'm just going to mess around with some drama. And what I want you to do is as I write, I want you to tell me when I'm hitting, hitting a, a bone in your body. You know, when, when it's something, that's it. Um, so I want to start with, instead of, you know, usually people start with, hi, my name's Angela Brooks. I'm from Kentucky, blah, blah, blah. Um, we start with, in, in written form, we start with the drama. Okay. Couldn't be done. Then you can. I'm a terrible typist. I don't know if you've ever suffered through this. <laughs> I'm a terrible typist. Why not become a copywriter? <laughs> hey, what works, works, though. And no glasses on. Um, I had to put mine on. <laughs> what did you tell me, Matt? Uh, you came in at six at night, seven in the morning. Six at night, yeah, seven yeah. in the morning. So three days a week. So Which you were working. You were working thirteen hours. Yep. You weren't even working twelve. So you were working thirteen hours. Yeah. And if I didn't have anybody to relieve my shift at seven, I had to stay till they got there. Mandatory, right? Mandatory. Yeah. Uh, mm. Were people coming and going? Like, like, was this a? facility that people would be admitted after having an episode and they were remanded or or give me an idea of the type of patient base you guys had they could stay seven days they could stay seven months and there's some of them would come in from jail to be evaluated for court um we had some that are bariatrics that would stay you know longer because they didn't have anywhere to go but we had homeless we had prisoners we had um, people there against their will because they had some type of episode or something where oh, they, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And there's some people that came in and out all the time, they would get off their meds and 90 days they'd be back. So that's what I'm getting at. Somebody who was, you know, yeah, okay. Um, and of course, nowadays with the drugs and the alcohol, you didn't know what was in their system when they walked in the door. So you were, I mean, the aggression was just off the chart. People wouldn't believe half the things I could tell. Because <laughs> I would walk in the door. There was many nights I would come in the door. And you knew, would just barely sit your bag down and you'd be out in the hall in the floor fighting with somebody, literally fighting, not just wrestling. And I worked on the men's unit. They were a lot bigger than me most of the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like fun summertime stuff going on at your house. The, I'm at a coffee shop. I'm sorry? You I'm at a coffee shop. Oh, you are? Oh, I thought it was you were home. Okay. No, I, she, I have somebody cleaning my house right now, and I came to the coffee shop because internet's faster. So I knew you'd be streaming, and it would need good internet. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting because if the internet at your house isn't that strong, you work in different ways than a lot of other people. I don't yeah. see you doing a lot of live at work, do you? Mm -mm. No. Because and that's why is because sometimes it'll glitch, sometimes it doesn't. So I have to come to town to do them.
and I drove 45 minutes home after I got off shift. And I used my car as a mobile university. Yeah, right now we're going to focus on the drama to draw them in. Yeah. Um, as opposed to all of those, those are the tips and the things. Um, yep, they were up all right. <laughs> I truly don't know how we survived those years. <laughs> was it financial that you were working or was it, um, I wanted to say, but this is what we had to do to make ends meet and give me as much time with the boys. Okay. To yeah. Yep, we couldn't have we couldn't have lived on the farm without with our checks. <clears throat> and I kept my old checkbooks to remind me how far that I've come. <laughs> like, wow, how did we survive on that? Right? I, I sometimes I look back at some of my stuff too and I'm like, whoa. Uh Look, and there'd be $152 in there, and today was five more days. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's crazy when I look back at stuff. Um, it's crazy. And, and, and if anybody happens to watch this that's there now, go find Angela and check out her academy because I'm telling you, it's possible to get out. We, did, we, we both did it. Yeah. It's possible. And we look back now, I mean, you know, I know you travel to different things. I see you at events and we're in these beautiful resorts and different things. And I sit back and I think as a kid, I never stayed anywhere better than like a quality inn. And we're in these resorts with these pools and wandering lazy rivers and this, this and that and room service. And it just fascinates me. It, I almost can't remember, the job, which is weird. It, it, it yeah. seemed like I was working so hard and nothing was really happening. And then one day it did. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I'm very humbled when I stay at these kind of places because that's not where we, we didn't we did vacation for years. But no, it was just not. It was not in the budget. No, exactly. And and none of this was like the amount of flights I take now fascinates me. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I was never on a plane until I was a certain age, and then if I flew once every three, four, five years, it was a lot. Yeah. Um, so it's crazy. Okay. Uh, awful lot of sunshine that I was going about leaving my job. Remember. Uh. I don't want to make it sound like totally dependent on you because you have a beautiful family. And so we yeah. never, wanna, we know, um, uh, both. But it took both of our checks to, to live the way we've been. Absolutely. And good grief, we were so supportive, like, you know, crazy learning. <laughs> so, so far, is this painting any of the picture? Absolutely. Um, okay. Um, Absolutely. So now we're at the point. So what we do is we always, when we're, when we're telling a story, we first want to focus on what it was like. Um,
Okay. That was exhausting. Always, always, always want to share with people what circumstance was like before and whether we're talking about business or product, you know, what health circumstances before we found this product, what the life circumstance was before. Without the before, I'm kind of doing this for our, our people who are, who are listening in or watching. Um, Angela, I know you know this, obviously. You've been doing sure. this for, for but um, without the before, there's no contrast. And the contrast is where the attraction happens. Um, people recognizing and going, my gosh, what she went through. Um, and if you think about any movie, any good movie, we are always finding out what the circumstance is before they fall in love, before they get rich, before they become a superhero. You know, he was like a mild mannered, you know, Superman. He's a mild mannered guy. You know, and all of a sudden he figures out he's Superman. So he's a Clark, the Clark Kent syndrome. It was like this is this nerdy dude that has his regular nine to five and he runs into a, a, a phone booth or he did back in the day and <laughs> flips around and, and, and emerges as the superhero. That's part of the human fantasy, right? Right. So everybody who's in a job, just like you, you probably work nights and just thought there's got to be a way, there's got to be a way. So we have to paint the picture for them in order for them to be insanely attracted to you um, when we show what, what happened. Yeah, I literally sold product out of the trunk of my car because the person who signed me up the very first time didn't tell me that I that the company would ship it to their house. I was <laughs> selling out of the trunk of my car and I thought I was making good money. Well, I did that because um, back in the day, you couldn't have a drop ship like that. And we all had inventory, all had inventory back in the day. Um, I love when people say now you don't need inventory. Who's needed inventory in the last however many years? But in 1999, 2000, you had to buy an inventory. Um, yep. You know, and eventually you could have it sent to someone, but you couldn't have your customers just go online. Um, there was no online. <laughs> I was going to say it didn't exist. Yeah, well, it did a little bit, but generally speaking, you called in and placed an order. Right. And then you could have it shipped to where you wanted, but it was easier and quicker because back then people actually wanted the product now. Nobody wanted to wait. It was pre-Amazon. Now true. everybody seems to wait in two days. You know, it's like, okay, Amazon, I'm going to get it in two days. Mm -hmm. um, back then, everybody wanted it now. So it was a different sensibility going on. Uh, uh, trying to be. Yep. Did you have the Blackberry already when you realized that you could work on it or did you buy it in order to work on it? I bought that. I literally saved the money up to be able to go buy that because I felt like that was a business tool that I needed. Before that, I had a flip phone. <laughs> What year was this? Um, the 2010. Is that loud? Oh, that's fine. Enduring the dead.
uh, come down on the ward. for a few minutes. And on my lunch break, I would literally go sit in my car or I'd sit on the front porch at a psychiatric hospital during the night. It was crazy. Now, what we're doing here on purpose is letting them believe that some magical tool will emerge in their life and make things magic. Guess what the magical tool will be? That Blackberry at the time. <laughs> well, yeah, but guess what it will be now? The Marketing Freedom Academy. Absolutely. Okay. Um, because what they're going to, what we're doing is pre-prompting them to think that something magic shows up. Now, I know that sounds evil, but we're not slimy marketers, and there's a heck of a lot more slimy stuff out there. Everybody believes there. It's <laughs> archetype of I'm a singer and I'm going to get discovered and they're going to make me a star. It's the old archetype of my boss someday will notice and make me an executive when I work in the mail room. Yeah. Everybody ever has had this, you know, that that man of my dreams will run into me while I'm walking down the street, stop, turn around, look back and know he's in love with me. <laughs> right? Absolutely. So, in this, we love to believe this stuff. So we have to use storytelling practice inside of our marketing. Um, and by the way, this is long copy to be used on a website. Obviously, yeah. this isn't something we're saying. But if you read it a bunch of times, you'll realize how to add drama into the story. But Angela, what I want you to do, okay. we have to work on not sounding. Let me stop sharing the screen for a minute because I want to see your fifth while I do this. Um, we don't want to sound like everybody else. Right. Okay. So everybody else tells the story in the same way, which is, um, and you said a couple things, like um, my university of wheels. You know, I listen to tapes on my 45 minute drive to yeah. and from, and that's cool. But how many times have we heard that? Yes, I don't want to be the broken down, I have a dollar in my pocket story that everybody shares. Yeah, I lived in a van, I lived in a car, I lived on yeah. a, you know. Um, you didn't, you had a great family and yeah. you were doing all Americans do, which is do what you got to do to make ends meet to be home with your kids. I did I be home with my kids. I'm, I, I mop floors in a supermarket. I started my business. I couldn't afford to keep it running without working at all. And I mop floors in a supermarket at night. I, I was on cleanup crew at night to keep my business alive. I'm educated woman. You know, you're an educated woman, but what worked? Cause I could go out at night after I tucked the kids in. Yeah. I could come home, you know, and I would, they never knew I was gone truthfully. Oh, wow. It was worth doing. Um, you do what you got to do. Yes. Yeah. So you are the story of, um, you know, do what you got to do. But what I want to do is keep away. I want to create, when you think about the best marketers, if I were to rattle off stories, you knew, you would know which marketer it was. Like if I say personal foreclosure, who's that? Ray Higdon. Yeah. Cause he always says it that way. Right. And it's a different way. You know, it's a, the way he says it. Um, you know, I'm thinking of some other people who are not around anymore, unfortunately, due to circumstances. But the best marketers have a way of telling their story that causes people to remember it. And when people say burnout nurse, there's they think of me. Mm -hmm. So burnout nurse is perfect. We've had them and, and we'll have more. But I know it sounds goofy, but the Blackberry act becomes something, the magic Blackberry. Um, because something because it's retro, it's blackberries aren't around anymore. But what it does is cause people to think there's some magic coming for me. Um, and that's why I'm looking for burnt out nurse. We've heard it's true, right? You know? Um, I would if you can laugh at it, and I don't want to poke fun at anything you've been through, so, but like I would need my personality, which is different than yours. I'd be like, I call myself the psycho ward nurse. <laughs> and and I'd be like, look, I went from one psycho ward to another, but this one is cool. You know, so I would have fun with that, but I don't know if that's offensive in some. None at all. We have a psychiatric nurses have a very sick sense of humor. So that would go right with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so some days I wake up and I start to work on my business and I wonder, am I back in the ward again? And I got <laughs> crazy business types. Um, you know, I would have fun with that. Um, 
I would use the word ward a lot. Um, you know, I would even maybe consider putting it into um, like um, I did a campaign once where um, everybody was afraid of prospecting. So I did a thing called the boiler room where I just said, come on, let's go. We're going in the boiler room, like a cold calling boiler room from back in the day. Let's go in the boiler room. We're going to work on this. Wow, that's good. I might call some of your marketing ward. Okay, let everybody, let's walk the ward. Let's walk around and let's talk about all the conditions of the prospects we're seeing. Or I don't know what you're teaching. That's you know? really cool. Oh. Is it? it? Now you're taking the theme and you're becoming iconic, Angela. Oh, I love that. That gives me cold chill. <laughs> Good. Was this worth? Was this it worth? Was good. One, thank you for letting other people watch it. You're the first person that agreed to do this. Two. Was it worth a couple bucks? Right. Absolutely. If we didn't do anything else, the idea that you're rotating your business and your terminology and becoming iconic around your own background, walking the war, which would just be like the idea of of examining all the stories that the prospects have, or all the different ways to craft your content, or whatever. And I can talk that easy because that's my terminology already. Exactly. Making the rounds. What is the doctor? The doctor comes in and they make the rounds. You're administering meds, right? So you're, you're making the rounds across the floor, across the ward to administer meds. So using your lingo. Love it. Turning it into, you know, um, this type of stuff. And especially because you're in a particular type of nursing that we could have a little fun with. Um, yes. You are crazy. I'm crazy. We wouldn't be here if we weren't crazy, right? That's right. That is right? exactly right. Crazy people can figure this sucker out. <laughs> the average mainstream thinking person can't get creative enough to figure out how to get out of that matrix. But people like us, be like everybody told you, you can't do it. You can't do it, which we'll get yeah. into now. It's not possible. You can't do it. And you were like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And so was I, I was just like, you know, when I was told I had to do meetings, I was like, I can't, I, I, I can't do this. I can't be a mom and, and, and work every night. That's what they would do. Hold meetings in my home at night when it was bedtime for my kids. I refused. I came up with all this attraction marketing stuff that I'm famous for today. Yeah. So it was the stepping out of the thought process of the mainstream, including mainstream networks, because at the time you were doing something that made, I was, I mean, I was cursed. I, I thought it was hysterical. The recent ANMP, um, all the people that told me attraction marketing and social media is evil, now they have a whole day featuring it. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's at every event. Social media day. And I'm like, you guys got to be kidding me. How long ago? I have eight letters from leaders, from top dogs in the industry telling me that I am hurting people. Literally, I have letters from top dogs. Oh, my of top leaders saying that the internet will never last. I saved them all on purpose. Just, just, I don't need to pull them out. I don't need to show anyone. Right. I know that I knew that I knew that I knew, plus the power of a mama. Never, 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 you know, disregard the power of a mom to figure something out. That's right. Because I was already spending 13 hours, and by the time you drove, an extra two hours a day, that yeah. I didn't do them anyway. Yeah. So I wasn't giving up my time. I was like, this shit will work, period. Yeah, exactly. And and so what you did was you learned how to leverage and double double do. And that's what I'm getting in the story is that you learned how to how to do both overlapping and it gave you an extra eight hours to your day. Um, yes. so that's what people can't understand how to do is, you know, like I tell people, look, go sit in the toilet on your break and act like you have to do a poop and sit there and, and post on Facebook, you know, <laughs> do it. Well, somebody's gonna see, and I'm like, everybody plays on their phone while they're on the toilet. <laughs> I actually got called into personnel office. I don't. You probably used Hootsuite at one point or time. Mm -hmm. And when I would go to work, I would have things pre-programmed to start posting. You know, before uh -huh. we got off shift. And he called me in and said, "You're posting on your work hours." And I'm like, "No, I'm not." And he said, "He says it's right here." And I said. And I'm standing right in front of you. And I said, if you'll wait five minutes, I'm going to post again. And it did. And he's like, he's like, how did you do that? And I'm like. But at least you were able to document for him because a lot of people don't believe you. Yes. When you're doing this stuff, they don't believe. Like, like I'll pull content that I did two years ago. And people don't realize, other than my hair color recently changed. So, but Or my weight changes sometimes. But other than that, people don't realize it's old content or old letters that I've pre-programmed. Or I'm away. I'm, I've been out of the country. 
and had all this stuff publishing and stuff like that and people saying this is and that and then when I said well I was out of the country I didn't see your message or something like that or I didn't you know whatever they're like you were and you were right here and I'm like no I wasn't no, I wasn't yeah 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 and let me go back to this but so I it. and that's what I was saying let me keep going until I say something or do something that makes you go ooh, ooh, ooh. that's it this type of terminology terminology um, to really iconicize yourself, it's going to make a big difference for you in your marketing. Yeah. You see, it's one thing when you're recruiting for network marketing, that's no big deal. But when you get into info products, you have to be known. Otherwise, you spend a lot of money on advertising. Um, right. You know, and people and people start going. You know, the nurse lady, the psycho ward lady. That's what you're after. Having people being like, "Oh yeah, Angela. You mean Angela?" Um, that's what we're after. Yeah. And um, I would go find an old BlackBerry if I were you. I'd go find. I'm sure you could find one at a tag seller somewhere. There's got to be one around. You can buy an old one. I sure. might. I don't think I have one. I have old phones, but I don't think I have back to a BlackBerry. I would be like, "This is a BlackBerry moment." And I would show people how to gain leverage. I, I would I would have some fun pictures of you in front of a white screen or whatever. You know you know what I'm saying? Like you cut out that needs to be okay. in our marketing. Yeah, that this, this is Blackberry, Angela's Blackberry moments. Here's how I did this back in the day. Here's how you do it today. That's a winner right there. Because everybody's like Blackberry moments. What is she doing using a Blackberry? And then they realize you're not using a Blackberry. You're showing people how you got out. How you got out. And I bet you anything you can find an old one. Some, some, some. I may still have that one in a drawer. I recently, I'm looking in my drawers here on my desk. I know I have phones. I don't think I have. <laughs> I know I have phones. I, I think I brought them to a friend who was looking for a phone. And this is this my box from the S7. I'm just making sure I have a video camera. You want to know a video camera? Oh my gosh. That's you know, we come on our phones. We all walked around. Like I had a flip. I had this. I had one of those. I need a video camera. What else do I got in here? I got, oh, an attachment to my vacuum. <laughs> this is a, what is this one? This is a, this is a note. What kind of phone is this? Notebook. Note four. Oh, wow. That's the first big phone. Yes. Thing. I mean, oh, no, it did have a smart pen, uh, a pen on it back then. Um, this is oh, and what was those things? They were not a beeper, but um, kind of like the notebook that you could write on that first came out. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Those things were, people think. Oh, those I'm, I'm, wasting your, I'm wasting your session, but I'm having too much fun. I have a glue gun for all my crafty needs. Um, this is Brunson uh, CD or DVD on the perfect webinar, which I probably saved and never watched. Um, and I watched that to do my story, and I got his point, but it was not flowing the way this is. <laughs> uh, well, that's the other CD right here. That's a story. And it's star story and solution. Yeah, so, Russell, yep. we love. Um, haven't seen Russell in ages. Cool. I'm going to see Russell. I get to go to a, um, I qualified um, in Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi's launch. I qualified to go to a party with. Oh, nice. I qualified. So I'll get to see Russell. I haven't seen Russell in a while. All right, let's get back. I'm babbling, but I'm excited when I hit, when I hit gold. I hit gold. So that's good. That's good. Let's go back. Share. Mm. Enter my BlackBerry, the tool that changed my life forever. <laughs> I know. No. It's down. Now, Angela, what I'm teaching you about right here is something called cognitive dissonance. That's when something creates like a little skip in your brain. So when we have Angela's Blackberry moments, right? You do something like that. Everybody's like, well, nobody uses a Blackberry. That's dumb. So it makes them skip. They have no choice but to look because it's outdated. It's, 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 it, 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 it scratches their record. Um, and there's all different ways, like calling it walking the ward or any of that type of stuff. 
everybody goes, the ward, what are you talking about? Because everybody else is using the same lingo. Like I'm a boss babe. I'm a, you know, yeah. what whole thing is this week? Um, and I'm not picking on anybody who uses these terms, guys, but they become overused and every generation yeah. of marketer has the overused term, you know, like university, rolling university. It was a very popular thing, ground floor opportunity, like-minded individuals. Remember when everybody was reaching out because you were a like-minded individual. So when we use something that's so completely different and weird, it makes people stop and go, what is she talking about? Yes. And then you just giggle in your, in your special Angela way and go, I know nobody uses a BlackBerry anymore. But this, is, this is the thing that did it because this is what gave me the leverage that I needed. And that's what you need to learn about leverage or whatever it might be. Or fitting more into your day or whatever. Huh? Love it. I'm finding now that a lot of the kids don't use laptops at all. I'm like, take out your laptop. We're working. They're like, I don't have. One. Yes. I'm like, what do you mean? You know, how do you how do you do this on on without a, a laptop? And they're like, <laughs> nobody does. And they look at me like I'm insane. They're like, nobody does. Yep. It's going into the palm of their hand. Yeah. And, and whole countries around the world don't use computers, so. Uh. It was the cutting edge on there. <laughs> I remember when I got my first cell phone, everybody thought I was insane. Uh, couldn't believe I spent the money on that thing. Right. Now I've got the iPhone X and it's like, look what I spent on that thing. But, but it's, phones are more expensive than computers now, but it's fascinating what phones can do. Oh, everything. It, you know. yeah. I love my phone. I have the Note whatever it is, eight or nine or whatever. And my little pen is actually a remote control. So I can, put my, I can put my phone over there. I can prop it up to take a picture and use this as the remote control. It's it's crazy the things oh, it does. Cool. Turns me into a cartoon. It, <laughs> uh, I didn't want to be a cartoon, but I am now. <laughs> I it it's my hair color change. Okay. Um, save my pennies. You get one. And everyone I knew thought I was crazy. I spent that much on a phone. But... That phone gave me the leverage I needed. Dreams are reality. And, and again, this is a long version. I'm writing it long on purpose. And That phone gave me leverage I needed to make my business dreams a reality. When everyone I knew, including my upline, <laughs> said it wasn't possible to build online. This crazy psych nurse, and I'm saying that on purpose. <laughs> now, we have a choice here. We can tell them what you did or we can not. Not telling them is more attractive. And that pushes them into the academy. Yep. It took me, what did you say, three years and 10 months? Yep. I don't like three years and 10 months. Uh, 36, 46. Using my coffee breaks. And because you worked late at night, we're going to say lunch hours. Yeah. Lunch at 30 minutes. <laughs> Today, I know 
Today I see people My Blackberry it is now a treasured artifact. See if you can find one. I am. Totally got that on my note. I am wording a sexy iPhone X. Yep. With me as... How old are the kids now? 23 and 15. Oh, that makes me almost too. There you go. It was in Kentucky, the, the psych ward. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the psychology of the way you're writing makes it just easier for the eyes to read. Yes, yes. We always separate it, leave it nice and open. I happen to be writing on notepads, so you'll have to format it more depending on where you go. And you can edit this. I mean, obviously, nothing's ground in stone. Sure. Trying to give you the thought process behind the drama of the story. Um, Absolutely. Uh, blank, blank, blank. I'm going to put blank, blank, blank Academy, whatever you decide to call it. Okay. I'll definitely do like shorter. I'm not loving become free uh, to. Ooh, escape's a good word. I need to use a lot more psychiatric words. Yes, I mean, you are a, I yeah. mean, what I'm doing right now um, is using psychology. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. Storytelling is delving in. You've been around people. Um, let me stop this screen again for a minute, Angela, because I want to look at your face again. When, we're when somebody is, um, I've been around a lot of um, different populations uh, over the years through different things I did before I came into this world. When somebody um, has different psychiatric conditions and I am uneducated in certain ways, so if I say something goofy, you ever see somebody who's, um, I, well, I know you have, um, they go through different phases, like somebody who's bipolar. They become very inflated and grandiose, and then they can drop down, right? Etc. So we are delving into the, 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 when somebody's mentally ill. Very often, they don't have filters that other people have, um, so they can become grandiose. They can have these delusions. They can have this. Everybody has those fantasies. Everybody has the fantasies. It's yeah. just 
those people cannot act upon them because of the filters that we have through our, our mental health and then also through society. When somebody's mentally ill, they don't perceive, they don't have the same filters that we all have and they don't perceive society in the same way that we do. Right. But you've seen the things that people believe firsthand. Um, oh. There's also people that believe they're not enough and really down. We see that a lot in this industry. So when we speak into these issues, mm. people become gravitationally attracted to us. And I think I've really pushed my nursing back or pushed it down because mm -hmm. it was like I was so ready to leave that I think I like completely retired. But that's mm -hmm. my knowledge base. And that's what I'm saying. what I'm saying? Like, and I would, obviously you can't tell anything that's confidential and you're right. not about a specific patient but in some of your copy and things that you write or maybe emails to your list and stuff like that um i would do things about well i can't you know the, the names and the, the you know how they say in, on like um police drama the names and the stories yeah. are real you could do something like that where you start and go the names and the circumstances have been changed but the stories are real these are the chronicles of a psych ward nurse I'll never forget the night that I came in and there was a gentleman who had just been admitted. He believed that he was Jesus. Yeah. Or whatever, you know, he believed this is not. And I sat in my exhaustion of taking care of my two boys and running to work. And I thought to myself, this dude thinks he's, you know, thinks he's God. And I, I don't even think I'm alive. There's something wrong with this picture. There has to be more to life. Sometimes, you know, I, I don't know. There's a way, and I'd have to work with you. But you see what I'm saying? And so you're yes. not divulge a real story, um, like of a real. Those stories bring people into me every single time I tell them. And every time. So if you make it a, you know, things have been changed. The names and the circumstances have been changed, but the stories are real. Um, and talk about our own delusions in the industry. I mean, I watch people all the time. They've done nothing and they're pissed off because they're not rich yes that's a delusion and talk about delusions of grandeur delusions of of not be not being enough there's a clinical term for it talk about hearing voices talk about um you know I, whose voices are you listening to when somebody's mentally ill sometimes depending on their their diagnosis they hear voices well all of us who are not mentally ill are sitting around hearing voices all day long we're hearing voices on instagram on facebook and this is and this and we think they're real yeah. All of this content type of content is old for you. Money, 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 money. Because everybody's going to go, you're right, I'm hearing voices and I'm perfectly fine. What What am I doing? Why am I listening to this? And people are talking to themselves all the time. Uh -huh. All the time. Right you here. So many, and really, that's the concern that mental health professionals have right now is our connection to social media and how it's impacting our youth. Um, I wouldn't get clinical or anything. I would have fun with raising the ideas, but are you talking to yourself? Uh, you know, uh, you know, when I was talking to herself now, calling it a podcast. Yeah. 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 And, and, and it's, well, is, is talking to yourself, am I insane for talking to myself? And then you talk about creating content or doing lives or, um, and, and when are you talking to yourself in a great way? And when are you talking to yourself and it's kind of cool, you know, are you making progress? Are you, all of these things you have so, if you were to just sit and take out a, a simple book on, on, um, uh, you know, um, what you call it, psychology, um, when people are not well, um, there's a name you took, you know, you had like developmental. You had yes, the, yes, yes, yes. I was a psych mind. Yes. Um, yes, yes, yes. But if you were to take out and just go through different conditions and then relate them back to how we manifest those same conditions, but not in marketing. You'd have some real gold. Um, you also would, um, you know, things like when is it time to admit yourself? You know, uh, you know, when is it time, to, you know, take a look. When you know, when do you need uh, group therapy? You know, when is it effective to sit around and master? And when is group therapy hurting you? When you're sitting around with a bunch of people that aren't moving, all discussing how you don't move. I always talk about that. I'm like, you guys have a mastermind of people that are making no money together. It's a good plan. Let's all mastermind on not making money this week. Love that. You know, Love that. so there's so many different angles for you. And I know you're following me. So let me finish this up. 
And then we're at the top of the hour, um, but I think we group good therapy. Group therapy is the academy. I love it. I love right. it. Right? Effective group therapy can break you through. There's so many different things. There's so many different analogies here. Um, you know, heads, like, are you watching too many? Uh, are you watching TV? Or are you watching too many Facebook lives and not doing your work? Is that your met? Is that your, is that what you use to medicate yourself? Um, there's so many different ways you can twist this around and have a lot of fun with it. Just, just be careful. I mean, you may, wanna, you know, do some more work with me at some point because you got it. There's a line because you don't want to offend anybody who has somebody they love that has a mental illness and you're sensitive to it because you're a medical professional. Right. Don't, there's a line, but talking about some of these things and just, you're so kind. You're such a kind person. Thank you. Don't think you're going to have an issue. Somebody else that's flippant could cross the line. I don't foresee you doing yeah. that. There's always a sensitivity to the, you know, the population that you cared for. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of analogies, um, you know, and there's been TV shows made about this stuff. You know, there's yeah. been. And they made fun of them more than mm -hmm. Some of the best people I've I met was absolutely psychotic. We had the best conversations, the best. Some of the most brilliant people I've met yes. marketing walked the line. There was a gentleman that was on my unit. He was brilliant when it comes to numbers. And I was taking a math college course at the time and I was struggling. And he's going, can I see that? What are you doing? And I'm like, here, you can have it. He goes, no, I'm going to show you how to do this. I made a hundred in that class because he was in the hospital the whole time I was in the class. And every night he would work with him on that. A savant skill set where he has an extreme capability. So we say that all the time too with um, kids with Asperger's and stuff like yeah. that. They have a diagnosis, but they have an extreme intelligence and then some often social deficits or something. Yeah. Um, you also, in your work, Angela, you might also be able to do some some really goodwill about understanding some of these conditions. People tend to judge. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's there's a lot of different nuance of what you can do here to talk about psychology, talk about how it applies to the industry, talk about how um, we're all, uh, we all have shades of. We're on the edge. We're on the edge. We all are. And um, I've been through divorce. I've been through divorce and it puts you on that fine line. You could flip either way. Well, I'll tell you, I thought I was going to flip the wrong way for a little while. <laughs> but thank God I could buy a little help from my friends and just, you know, sitting on a couch and saying, it's okay, girl. You, 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 got, this. you got this. Loving loving yourself for a little while. Let yeah. me finish this here. And um, I think we're, we're pretty good. I hope you found value in this today. I hate that word because it's so oh good. Oh, my gosh. So good. Uh, tell your friends because I like doing these. They're fun and it's a double dip because it's, um, it's working with a client, but it's also um, uh, creating content at the same time, which I think is helpful to people. Very helpful. This is amazing. But the nurse in me will never die, and neither will the mama, which is why I've decided to use all my skills in helping other families uh, learn how to use today's technology to escape their realities and move into what most believe is a fantasy. I love that phrase. Love that. But this, I couldn't figure out how to write my content to lead them to the academy, but that is their Blackberry secret. I mean, that is where the healing began. Yeah. So this is the story. And then and then you tell the story of how the academy was born. And, you know, you can get more into it. What you don't want to do is tell them what's in the academy. Um, what you can do is give them a, you know, for an opt-in, maybe give them a lesson or a this or a that or a one-time offer. Um, I think I'm going to leave this like it is, Angela. I don't think I'm going to add more. Um, so good. I'll send this over to you momentarily. Um, if you want it on Facebook, I can send it there. If you want me to email it to you just on Facebook, give me your email. I'll send it to you via email. Either one, whichever is easiest. I'm just, 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 
it's just on notepad so there's no formatting or whatever yeah. you will edit change um it's just a concept you know um, i mean you can use it, you need to polish it slightly but it's um i think it's powerful what we did today and i think that each person has like i'm an old teacher you know and and that's my background so i talk about curriculums and i talk about you know these different skills because that's my background um and people always laugh because i'm like look you're not following the curriculum and i'm the old you know creepy teacher and you know and i joke about it um i'll swatch it with a ruler this ain't you know you think this is 2019 this is 1950 hands <laughs> out you know but this so, gives me permission to bring my nurse out and use her i think you should and i also think that your nurse is a great way to love on people yeah um, your businesswoman is over here. You know, we have to produce. They have to either make a purchase and buy the academy or in the downline. Like, I'm always trying to explain to people the contrast. I love you. I want to help you. But if you don't take action, I can only have you in the group. I can't I can't sit with you because you know, I just can't. People are always like, let's get on the phone and talk. What are we going to talk about? What we didn't do today, you know? Right. So there's there's the businesswoman in me that's running a business, and then there's this mom and teacher, which is what the, what these sessions are about. I'm a teacher; I can't help it. I like, I wanted some something good like this. this I mean, this is the kickoff. This was spectacular. <laughs> this was good. Thank you for giving me the 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 chance to work with you on this because this is this is what I do. I'm not real good at like I don't want to build your website or nothing. <laughs> okay. No, but this is this is. I'm, sorry. I'm good at that. Good. All right. So, are you happy? Any questions or anything about what we did so far today? No, I have lots of thoughts going through my head. <laughs> it's a good well, thing. Find me if you have any questions after the fact, and then if you know if at any point you find that this type of stuff is helpful, um, you know I do do other stuff. We don't have to be on camera if you want to work on secret stuff or whatever. If you ever want to, um, you know, get together for some work, I'd love to at any point. Um, and uh, I think this is really effective. So um, I'm excited. I love I love when I create, you know, like when I work with someone and we create, it's like, it's hard. Well, that's good. Uh, Thank you so much. I appreciate you all for that. And then no. I just can't imagine people not reaching out and taking advantage of that. When I got well, that email, I was like, yes. You know, I, I, I've had several people reach out. I've had other people ask questions and stuff like that. And I think until people see what we can do, and then some people are a little sheepish. I've had a lot of people that have reached out and they said, well, they're very worried about who might watch out there as opposed to them. Um, I might be able to help somebody else at the same time. I mean, I, I do private stuff too, of course, but I just think this is fun. And um, if any of you guys are watching this at any point and you're thinking, well, I, I'm not as advanced as Angela, well, neither were we. And sometimes a little guidance in the early stages or clarity, um, having somebody ask you questions about where you're going and what you want to accomplish. You already know what your academy is. So you didn't need help in that. You needed help in the story. Yes. You know, other people, they're not really sure where they want to go. They're confused. Should I be in network marketing? Should I be in affiliate marketing? Should I be this? Should I build a list? Should I, you know, all of these different questions. And, and it's different for each of us. It's just another mom who said, I can't follow the rules because those rules don't fit my lifestyle. And she figured it out. And, um, and I didn't know, I mean, I knew your story, but I didn't know the extent of it. So my respect for you has just grown tremendously today. Thank you. Thank you. 15, 15, hang on to that one. Cause they go quick, man. <laughs> yeah, they go. It's, this has been really fast. It's like, I got to hurry up and get out of this hospital so I can hang with my kids. They're really fun now. <laughs> Isn't it? it? I like, um, you know, mine are 23 and turning 26. And it's fun to hang out with them as adults as yeah. much as to be with them when they were kids. And the fact that they want to hang out with us is even better. Exactly. And that is I'm, huge. Yeah, I am. I am thankful for that. My kids are tremendous. They're awesome. 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 One's downstairs. She'll get a big head. But she, she <laughs> awesome. All right. Here we go. Have a wonderful day, and if you have a follow-up question or anything, just hit me up. I'm happy to answer. I will send that copy to you momentarily. All right. Appreciate you. Bye. Bye. Thanks.